My name is Ms. Jordan and I am so excited that you're here with me today. In this video, we are going to use our three actors tools to read and act out Rumpelstiltskin. Now, before we can act out a story, we need to warm up our actors tools. So find a space where you can stand up and move around and we'll get ready to go. It's time to warm up our first actors tool. As always, we're going to start with our body. So can you shake your arms and say body? Nice job. To warm up our body today, we are going to play a game called Use It or Become It. To play this game, I will give you an object and then you will use your body to either use that object or become that object. For example, if I said hairbrush, you could use the hairbrush by pretending to brush your hair, or you could become the hairbrush by posing like a hairbrush. All right, our first object is a baseball bat. Be careful with this one, so you can use the baseball bat, or show me how you would become a baseball bat. Awesome. Our next object is a blanket, so maybe you're all stunkled up, or maybe you form a blanket with your body. Nice blanket. Our next object is a broom. Maybe you're sweeping. Or how do you show me that you are a broom? And if you're a broom, can you show me you sweeping? Ooh. All right. Let's see, our next object is a computer. So you're typing away. Or maybe you are the computer. So show me how are you a computer. Ooh, what fancy computers. Nice. And our last object that we need to use or become is a hula hoop. So maybe you form a circle this way, or your hula hoop like this, or like this, or maybe you're using a hula hoop. Nice job, look at all these hula hoops. Awesome, and if you are forming a hula hoop, can you show me if you're a hula hoop being used? Awesome job, give yourselves a big round of applause. Now my body feels nice and warm. So it's time to warm up our second actor's tool, which, hmm, let's see if on the count of three, we can all remember our next actor's tool and say it together. One, two, three, voice. Nice job. Can you all say voice? Oh, marvelous. To warm up our voices today, we are going to sing a song called Boom Chicka Boom. So this is another repeat after me. So if I say repeat after me, can you say repeat after me? Awesome. Say as I say. And do as I do. I said a boom, chicka boom. I said a boom, chicka boom. I said a boom, chicka, rocka, chicka, rocka, chicka, boom. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. One more time. Big voice style. So now we're going to use our biggest after voices. Here we go. I said a boom, chicka, boom. I said a boom chicka boom. I said a boom chicka rocka chicka rocka chicka boom. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. One more time. Quiet style. So now we're gonna do it in a nice quiet voice. I said a boom, chicka boom. I said a boom, chicka boom. I said 
a boo, chicka rock, a chicka rock, a chicka boo. Oh yeah. Uh huh. One more time. Robot style. I said a boom, chicka boom. I said a boom, chicka boom. I said a boom, chicka rocka, chicka rocka, chicka boom. Oh yeah. Uh huh. One more time. Janitor style. Right. So I said a broom, sweep a broom. I said a broom, sweep a broom. I said a broom, sweep a mop a, sweep a mop a, sweep a broom. That one's a little tricky. I'll say it again with you, all right? Here we go. I said a broom, sweep a mop a, sweep a mop a, sweep a broom. Oh yeah, uh-huh. One more time, silly style. So I want you to say this in whatever silly voice you'd like. All right? I said a boom, chicka boom. I said a boom, chicka boom. I said a boom, chicka rocka, chicka rocka, chicka boom. Ghost style. All right, so for our last one, we're going to say it like ghost. So whatever that sounds like to you. I said a boom, chicka boom. I said a boom, chicka boom. I said a boom, chicka rocka, chicka rocka, chicka boom. Oh yeah, uh-huh, the end. Nice job, give yourselves a big round of applause for that awesome round of Boom Chicka Boom. And so, to warm up our final actor's tool, our imagination, we are going to play Magic Rock. So when I say magic rock, magic rock, you will turn into a magic rock like this. And when you are a magic rock, I will call out something for you to become. So magic rock, magic rock, I turn you into a puppy. Nice. Magic rock, magic rock, I turn you into a shark. Maybe you have a big thing. Maybe you're chomp, chomping. Maybe you're a baby shark. Nice. Magic rock, magic rock. I turn you into a bird. Do you a big bird? A tiny bird? Do you go caca, caca, or dee, 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 dee? Nice. Magic rock, magic rock. I turn you into an ant. Show me how tiny we can be. Are you a fast ant? Do you have something? Are you an ant carrying something? <gasps> Look at all these ants. Magic rock, magic rock. I turn you into a crab. Show me your claws. Nice. Magic rock, magic rock. I turn you into a tornado. So can you show me a nice, but I want you to be the most careful tornado there's ever been. And show me, whoa, whew, 
Make sure to stop before you get too dizzy. Magic rock, magic rock, I turn you into a bear. <sighs> Show me your bear. Maybe you walk on all fours and then you stand up. <gasps> or maybe, maybe you're a koala bear and you're hanging out in a tree. Or a polar bear and you're laying on some ice. There's so many different types of bears that we could be. Nice job. Magic rock, magic rock. I turn you into yourself. Nice, give yourselves a big round of applause for Magic Rock and take a big bow because we have warmed up all three of our actor's tools, which means it's time to read Rumpelstiltskin. So sit back, relax, find a nice comfortable place for me to read you the story. Don't worry, I promise I'll show all the pictures. Rumpelstiltskin, as told by Joanna Nadine, illustrated by Alejandro O'Keefe. In the far off times, there lived a poor miller and his daughter, Lily. Lily was kind and clever and good, but the miller was a show-off who liked to tell tall tales. Lily was in love with the prince, but was never going to meet him. So the miller went to the king and boasted about his daughter. She can spin straw into pure gold, he said. The king was delighted and summoned Lily to the castle. There, he took her to a turret and showed her a bale of straw. Spin it into gold by morning and you may marry my son, he said. Then he locked the door. But of course, Lily had no idea what to do and she stomped her foot in anger. At this sound, a goblin appeared. Give me your necklace and I will spin the straw into gold, he said. Lily's necklace had belonged to her mother, so she didn't want to give it away. But she did want to marry the prince, so she agreed. The goblin was as good as his word and spun the straw into reels of gold. The king was pleased, but he was also greedy. He took Lily to another turret with two bales of straw. Spin it into gold by morning and you may marry my son, he said. Then he locked the door. Again, Lily stomped her foot and again the goblin appeared. Give me your ring and I will spin the straw into gold for you, he said. Lily gave him the ring and the goblin spun the straw into reels of gold. The king smiled when he saw the gold, but it made him greedier still. He took Lily to another turret with three bales of straw. Spin it into gold by morning and you may marry my son, he said. Then he locked the door. Again, Lily stomped her foot and again the goblin appeared. I have nothing left to give you, she said, but I need your help. So the goblin thought and replied, Give me your first child and I will spin the straw into gold. Lily, who didn't care much for babies, agreed, and the goblin spun the straw into reels of gold. This time, the king kept his word, and Lily married the prince. The years passed, and in her happiness, Lily forgot that she didn't care much for babies. She and the prince had a little boy. They named him Tom. Lily also forgot her promise to the goblin, but the goblin did not forget. On Tom's first birthday, he came to the castle and said, Give me your baby. Lily could not bear to be parted from Tom, and she offered the goblin gold instead. But the goblin said Tom was the only treasure he wanted. But Lily was a clever girl. If I can guess your name, will you let me keep Tom? She said. I will give you three days, said the goblin. But you will not win. The child will be mine. Lily set to work. On the first day, she wrote down all the boys' names that she had heard of. When the goblin came that evening, she said, Is your name Adam? No, smiled the goblin. That's not my name. Is it Ahmed? asked Lily. No, smiled the goblin. That is not my name. Lily tried Akeem and Anton and Hassan and Hans. Each time the goblin said the same thing. No, that is.
is not my name. On the second day, Lily went to the castle library and wrote down all the boys' names she hadn't heard of. When the goblin came that evening, she said, Is your name Achilles? No, smiled the goblin. That is not my name. Is it Axel? asked Lily. No, smiled the goblin. That is not my name. Lily tried Kareem and Casper and Santos and Solomon. Each time the goblin said, No, that is not my name. On the third day, Lily had run out of ideas, so she went for a long walk into town. She walked around the market, listening for anyone with a different name. The only names she found in the market were ones she had already tried, like James, Jack, and Jonas. Lily had almost given up hope when she saw a market stall selling reels of thread. A little man was singing to himself as he stacked them in neat piles. He sang, My name's not John, my name's not Jim, my name is Rumpelstiltskin. Lily smiled because she could see that the little man was the very same goblin who wanted to take Tom away. When the goblin came that evening, she pretended not to know. Is your name Gumboot? she said. No, smiled the goblin. That is not my name. Is it Marmalade? asked Lily. No, that is not my name. Lily tried Slurp and Squelch and Mutton and Tintin, but each time the goblin said the same thing. No, that is not my name. Then Lily had one last guess. Is your name Rumpelstiltskin? she asked. The goblin stomped his foot so hard it went through the floor. He pulled with all his might, but he was stuck. Lily offered to help him as long as he vanished forever. The angry goblin disappeared. Tom stayed in the castle with Lily and the prince, and they are living there still. The end. What a fun story. Now it's our turn to act it out. So find somewhere you can stand up and move around and think about what character or characters you'd like to be. I'll be acting out all of the characters, so you can follow along with me or pick your favorite characters and just act those parts out. Here we go. Our story starts with Lily, who's in love with the prince. Can you show me you love the prince? <sighs> but she's never going to meet him, right? So we're kind of sad. Can you show me you're sad? <sighs> but Lily's father, the miller, has an idea. He goes to the king. Can y'all go to the king? And you say, my daughter can spin straw into gold. Nice. And the king is amazed. So she's the king. Can you say, whoa, bring her here. Nice. So the king tells Lily's father to bring her to the castle. And he does. And when Lily gets there, she's so amazed by the beautiful castle. Can you look around and show me how beautiful this castle is? Wow. And the king takes her into a room filled with straw. And you look around and see all the straw. And can you be a little confused? Can, Lily doesn't know what she's supposed to do with this. She can't spin straw into gold. Can you show me you're confused? Nice. And he says, spin this into gold by tomorrow. Nice. And Lily gets so angry, she stomps her foot. Can you know, stomp your foot? Nice. And when she does, a little goblin appears. So if you want to be the goblin, can you appear? And if you're Lily, can you be shocked? Is this? Nice. And if you're the goblin, can you say, I'll help you? Nice. And say, give me your necklace. And Lily doesn't want to. It was her mother's necklace. So if you really think about it, 
Oh, I guess we have to give him the necklace to so take off the necklace and give it to the goblin. And the goblin, I'm gonna spin. Can you do the spindle? Amazing. You're turning all this drawing to gold. Go faster and faster and faster. Nice. Now the goblin disappears. If you're a goblin, disappear. Nice. And Lily is so happy. Can you show me how happy you are? And then in comes the king. So the king walk in and say, oh, look at all this gold. Nice. And tell Lily, do it again tomorrow. And the king leaves. Lily, oh, she can't do it again. She didn't even do it this time. So can you stomp your foot again? Oh. And then when you stomp, the goblin appears. So if you're a goblin, come back and say, give me your ring and I'll help. Nice. So Lily knows she has no choice. She takes off the ring, gives it to the goblin. The goblin spins and spins and spins all night long until the room is full of gold and the goblin disappears. Nice. And then Lily is alone in the room with the gold until the king comes in and he's so excited. So can you show me how excited you are as the king? Yes, look at all this gold. Nice. And the king tells Lily, do it one more time. And Lily says, okay. And the king leaves and Lily's so angry, she stomps her foot again. But when Lily stomps her foot, it's when the goblin appears. But Lily, she doesn't have anything else to give the goblin. Can you show me how sad Lily is? And you say, I don't have anything else. The goblin says, that's okay. Give me your first child. Lily is kind of okay with that. And you say, okay. Nice. And the goblin spins and spins and spins and spins all the straw to gold. And then he disappears. And Lily is in the room and she's waiting for the king. And the king walks in and he's so excited by all of this gold. And he says, okay, you can marry the prince. And Lily's so excited, she can marry the prince. And Lily and the prince do get married. And after a while, they have a baby named Tom. Can you show me Tom, the baby? Nice, but then, Goblin appears again. So if you're Lily, can you be holding baby Tom? They are the goblin. And you say, I'm here for the child. Oh, nice. But Lily, Lily decided she doesn't want to give up her baby. So can you hold baby Tom even tighter? And you say, no. Nice. And the goblin says, we had a deal. Yeah, Lily says, hmm. If I guess your name, can I keep Tom? Nice. And the goblin is so sure no one can guess his name that he says, all right, and he disappears. So Lily is thinking, you show me you're thinking, she has to guess this name. And I want you to write down a list of names, think of all the names that you can. We're writing, we're thinking, and the goblin appears. All right, and so Lily starts guessing names. So start guessing names that you can come up with. Um, Adam, or uh, John, um, Benjamin. And the goblin says, no, no, no. That's not my name. And disappears again. And Lily, Oh, she thinks of all these names, and the goblin always says no. So Lily goes for a walk to see if she can hear a new name in town. So we're walking through town. We're listening. But all we can hear are names that we already guessed. The 
Then Lily sees someone in the back of town all by themselves and she recognizes it as the goblin. And so if you're the goblin, you do a little dance. Nice. And if you're Lily, you're just watching, you're wondering what is going on. The goblin is dancing. And the goblin says, my name's not John. Can you say, my name's not John? Nice. And the goblin says, my name's not Jim. My name's Rumble Stiltskin. Nice. And the goblin is dancing and doesn't know that Lily just heard his name. So Lily runs back to the castle because she's so excited she knows the goblin's name. And then the next time the goblin appears, Lily starts with some names. She says, is your name Gumboot? Can you all say Gumboot? And the goblin says, no. Is your name Marmalade? The goblin says, no. Lily says, is your name Rumpelstiltskin? And the goblin is so angry. And he says, how did you guess? Nice, and you all stomp your foot. Oh, but the goblin stomped his foot too hard and now it's stuck. Can you show me your foot stuck in the floor? Ugh. And that just makes him even angrier, showing how angry you are. Yeah, and Lily says, if I help you, you'll disappear forever. Nice, and the goblin's so angry. Oh, he says, fine. Can you all say, fine? Nice, and so Lily helps the goblin. So help the goblin. And the goblin is free, and he disappears forever. So disappear. Nice. And then Lily and baby Tom and the prince live happily ever after. So can you show me your happily ever after? Ah, oh, so wonderful. Nice. And now everyone say the end and take a big bow. Nice. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Thank you so much for being here with me today. I had tons of fun acting out Rumpelstiltskin with you. Now, I want you to remember that you can use your actor's tools wherever you are because they're always with you. Now, I hope I'll see you in the next video and keep on using those actor's tools in the meantime. I'll see you later. Bye.